Hey, what is up guys and welcome back to new tutorial slash review and today we'll have a look at the Samsung Evo 840 MSAT SSD and we'll also check out on how to install it. So I really needed a new SSD because my notebook got terribly slow with the old and full hard drive and in this video I will also show you how to upgrade it on the MSI GE70 2OE. So let's get started guys. And to upgrade your notebook to an MSAT SSD you just need a compatible notebook which got an MSAT slot. Then you need a screwdriver to remove the back cover and it's mostly a Phillips head but I would recommend to get a set because those sets are pretty cheap on Amazon or something and maybe you will need it once again. And you also need an MSAT SSD. And I got here the Samsung 840 EVO MSAT SSD with 250GB and it's a pretty nice SSD. By far not the best but it was on stock in my local PC store and I bought it because I needed it really fast. And I paid around 180 USD dollars and that's pretty okay for 250 gigabytes, at least in my country here. And yeah, now let's have a look at the Samsung Evo 840. Okay, so let's just do a quick unboxing on the SSD and here we can see it's the 840 Evo as said before, but there are different versions of the SSD. So we got it with different sizes, different speeds, but this one here is the 250 gigabyte version. It was the cheapest one and it got 540 megabytes per second write speed and about 520 megabytes per second read speed. So the speeds are pretty okay. Then let's have a look at the backside and here we can see three years of limited warranty so you get really good warranty time and I'm not sure what limited means but maybe I will find it out later then here we can see fast and evolutionary performance and I think that stands for the 3 gigabyte turbo write buffer and the 512 megabytes of cache which is really much and it also supports the Samsung magician software for SSD performance management and that software is really cool as you will see later Okay, then now let's open it up and let's see how the SSD looks like. So there we go, guys. And the first thing you will notice is that the MSA SSD looks completely different than a 2.5 inch desktop SSD. It's much smaller, it doesn't come with a case, so it's actually just a board with some chips. And that little piece here can hold up to 250 gigabytes. So if you compare that with my thumb here, it's just as big as two of my thumbs and that's really impressive. So such a small board can hold up to 250 gigabytes. And yeah, let's open up that plastic box and let's have a look at the MSAT SSD. And yeah, here it is, comes with the Samsung logo and all that stuff, but now let's get it out of the box and then let's have a look at the other things which we can find here in the box. So the SSD also comes with two of those stickers and those say Samsung SSD activated so you can put them on your notebook or on your desktop PC, but I got way too much of them. And we also can find here a user manual and warranty statement summary. So here you can check out um, how to claim warranty if your SSD breaks down. Okay, so basically that's it. And now let's have a closer look at the SSD drive. And here you can see how small the drive really is. So here on the left side we got a 2 euro coin and on the right side we got the SSD. And the whole board is not much bigger than 2 or 2.5 coins. And the area here which holds the chips is not much bigger than 1 coin. And that area here holds 250 gigabytes. Also the power consumption is not that much, so it is rated with 2 amps at about 3.3 volts and that equals about 6 watts or something, so that's the maximum power consumption. At the top you can see those holes and those are needed because you have to screw it down in the connector. And you have to have a screw because the screw is not included, so maybe it's in your notebook. If it's not in your notebook you have to find one. And here at the bottom you can see the connector. So you have a small side and here you have a slot and then you have a long side with more pins and there you can see it only fits in one direction. So installing that beauty here to our notebook is actually really easy. First of all, please back up your data. Because you may lose data or your Windows doesn't boot anymore, so just in case. Then remove the battery and disconnect the power connector. You should be able to do that easily here on the back side with those sliders. And then take your Phillips screwdriver and remove all screws which hold the back cover in place. And then just remove the back cover. And yeah, that's what I will do right now.
Okay, so when you have done that, it is time to locate the M SATA slot. And you can see here a lot of things under the hood, like the cooling system, the hard drive, the RAM, CPU, GPU, and all that stuff. But that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for those white connectors. And now you have to be careful, because there are a lot of different connectors. You have the M SATA slot here on the left side, which is labeled as SSD. And here on the right side, you have MPCIe slots. And those are just for Wi-Fi or Bluetooth cards. So guys, please don't try to use an M SATA SSD in the MPCIe slot of your notebook before you don't check if it's compatible. And mostly it's not compatible. Then let's have a look at the M SATA port. And as you can see, the SSD will just fit in one direction. So just take your SSD and put it into the port about 30 degrees from the mainboard. Just make sure that the white plastic nose here fits the slot of the SSD perfectly and that there is no gap between that. Now you can use your finger to push down the SSD to the thread and now you have to use a screw to screw it down to the mainboard. And you can see there's just one thread here on the left side so you just need one screw to screw it down to the mainboard. But unfortunately there is no screw included with the SSD and there was also no screw in my notebook. So I had to take that screw from my old notebook. But if your notebook has a Bluetooth or Wi-Fi card with two screws you can also take one of these. But make sure that the screw fits the thread because otherwise you will kill the thread and if you kill it you cannot screw down the SSD and then it will fall out of your slot and that's pretty bad. So make sure that the screw fits and if not please get one off your local electronics store. Okay so when you get the screw just screw down the SSD and when you have got that you can reattach the back cover, reinsert the battery and power on the notebook for the first time with the SSD and then enter the BIOS and make sure that it gets detected and that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so now it's time to power on the notebook, enter the BIOS and let's see if the SSD gets detected. So press the power button, press F2 or delete or maybe some other key, so that depends on your notebook and do that until you're in the BIOS. And here you have to look out for the SATA information tab and that one here is directly on my main tab. And here we can see that the Samsung SSD gets detected. So finally 250GB more in my notebook and finally an SSD drive. Yeah, and now I will install Windows 8.1 on the SSD drive and then we'll do some benchmarks. So let's see how fast it boots and let's see what speed we can get. Okay, so now I have a clean Windows installation on my notebook and now let's see how fast it can boot. So there we go, guys. And let's see if we can get it under 10 seconds, then it would be like on a MacBook. Okay, so I think it will be 12 or 15. Oh yeah, we get about 12 seconds, so that's pretty fast. And the booting times with my old hard drive were horrible. So I could get myself a coffee during the boot and it was about 5 minutes even with all the startup programs disabled. So the Samsung SSD does really a great job on that. And now let's do a little benchmark. And I have used a lot of different benchmark apps, but all show some strange values like 3 gigabytes per second and more. But that is because rapid mode is enabled. And rapid mode is actually a cool thing, because it uses the RAM as cache and boosts your rates with that. But that also stresses your CPU a bit. And then it's also possible to lose data if a power blackout occurs, because the data is stored in the RAM for a short time. But you can get some performance improvement. And the rates without rapid mode were much lower, so I get about 510 megabytes read rate and about 500 megabytes of write rate but that's without rapid mode. And here you can see the values with rapid mode. And here I get 3.3 gigabytes per second for read and three gigabytes for write, but that's just because it's RAM cached. And also with those insane rates, you just get a few percent more in gaming performance. So you really have to check out if it's worth it because you also risk data loss. And yeah, now let's check out the Samsung SSD software. 
And here we're now in the Samsung Magician software. So here you can see your drive health status. So as you can see, it is good right now. You can also see your total bytes written because there is a limit. It's set to 80 terabytes or something. Then the SSD is mostly broken. Also this tool tells you if there's something wrong with your SSD or if there could be performance improvements. And you can also see you can switch it between different modes. So if you want low power consumption, you choose maximum reliability or you can choose maximum performance. We also get your firmware update, OS optimization. And here at the bottom, we also got rapid mode so you can boost your rates here. And I also got an Intel SSD and it got a similar tool. But the Samsung Magician software is definitely better because you can do here a lot more things. Okay, so basically that's it. And now here comes my conclusion about the Samsung 840 EVO. Now I have to say the Samsung SSD does a great job. It was not the cheapest one, so there are also SSDs for $40 less. But I'm not sure if the quality and the lifetime is the same on these. Also the software is really nice, but I don't think that I will use rapid mode because I don't want to lose data if my notebook suddenly powers off. Okay, so if you're interested, you can find the link to Amazon down below in the description. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. And I hope I see you again in my next videos. Bye bye.